Do you keep having issues at your home or your office with your Wi-Fi where it disconnects, you just can't connect enough devices up at the same time, or it's slow and certain areas you just can't get a connection? Well, that's why you need a Wi-Fi mesh system like this from Tender. So the front of the box, you've got the three nodes on there. It says it's the Nova, it's the MX-12 free pack. There are other models available and different pack sizes. So depending on the speed you need, you can find the right option, what will fit you, different price points and everything. It's Wi-Fi 6, which basically means it's got really good coverage. 7,000 feet square to be exact. So that's a huge amount. It's a mesh, which basically means that three of these units will work together to create like a big bubble around your home or your office so you can connect up to the Wi-Fi anywhere, or even potentially plug directly into these things, a bit like mini switches, what you've got wirelessly around your house, which is really, really good. 160 megahertz of bandwidth, and well, it does everything it should do if you want to increase your Wi-Fi in your house. The back of the box is pretty straightforward, shows you a bit of a diagram of a house where you've got the three nodes positioned in different areas in your house to create that sort of bubble around it. So you've got Wi-Fi in every area and tells you obviously a bit more information. You've also got a purchasing guide on the back as well. It tells you about some of the different models and what coverage they give you and speeds it's ideal for. So inside the box, you've got three nodes. Each node has got a power cable, which is pretty good. You've got an ethernet cable as well, which goes in the primary node and plugs into your router, network switch, ethernet port, whatever you're gonna be using it to connect up to. Something what's got internet basically, so it can spread the signal. You've got manual and you've got a public liability notice. Bear in mind, one thing I didn't like is the extra plastic in here. One use plastic can't be reused. Each node had plastic around it and each plug had plastic around it. Could have done without that to to be honest with you. Save the environment, guys. So let's have a look at the node itself. So as you can see, it's quite tall. It's just under 20 centimeters tall. Width is just under nine. So it's, well, looks a bit like a mini skyscraper. Gone of the styling where they used to make them look like Rubik's Cubes. Here's an older model, so give you a rough idea. That's what they used to look like. So Probably looks a little bit more trendy than new ones, but I don't know. I still like the Rubik's Cube style myself, but again, this still looks pretty good. You can see it says Anova on the front there. It does have like a two-tone plastic. Actually, I think that's a bit of... Yep, yeah, they've put some, again, non-use... Oh, sorry. One-use plastic on there to protect it. Again, we don't really need that. It looks like we've got an LED indicator there. On the rest of the sides, it's really clear, apart from on the back, you've got some ventilation holes there, some more single-use plastic to protect this bit as well. Again, we don't need that. You've got a reset button by the looks of it there. Oh, sorry, a reset hole there. You've got a mesh button, that's to pair this up with other mesh units, or you can use it to de mesh it so basically remove it from the actual mesh network you've got three ethernet connections the bottom one to my knowledge is where you would connect up to your router so you'd plug in your router into this or your switch or your network the other ones are going to be for obviously adding additional devices and then you've got your power there otherwise it's pretty much to look at the bottom's got four rubberized feet, which will stop it sliding around, which is good. But it is a little bit top heavy because obviously it's quite tall. And then you've got all the specifications as well as a QR code on the bottom if you need it. Okay, let's go through the setup. So the first thing you need to do is use the power cable. The power cable is 1.2 meters long. You basically plug it into the power connection on the bottom of the node. Obviously the other end needs to plug it into a plug socket, obviously. Now you'll need to connect up the ethernet cable, which the one they supply is one and a half meters long. You could use another one. You don't necessarily have to use theirs, but that would plug into the bottom of the router there. And then the other end would plug into your router, BT Home Hub, Sky Hub, whatever it is you've got, switch. Basically the thing what brings internet into your house or office, you plug it into there. So this first node will need to be kept near your router or the main point of where your internet comes into your building, which obviously is how it works. Now, what we have to do is wait for the light on the bottom, which is currently red, to change. And to my knowledge, that will change to a green color when it's ready, which will basically mean that it's all set up. So it should blink green. 
There we go, didn't take too long. So that's now gone green. So that basically means this node is actually set up now. Bear in mind, it's using the built-in Wi-Fi code and everything what's on the bottom. You're not obviously using a custom one or anything like that. So now what you have to do is get your mobile phone and either A, download the app and connect up to the Wi-Fi of this using your app. Or the second option is to go into your settings on your phone. For example, here you click Wi-Fi, you click the name of the Nova, type in the password, which is on the bottom of the actual node. It should be the same password on all three, unless you're buying additional ones separate from the main bundle. Once you've connected up to that, you will then need to run the Tender app. So let me just get that up on here. So the Tender app is called Tender Wi-Fi. So if you haven't already got it on your phone and you haven't already got other Novas set up, as you can see, we've got quite a few set up. It should pop up automatically and go, oh, look, there's a new device here. Do you want to connect now? So you just press, well, not connect now. It says control now. So you click control now. And it says, welcome to the whole home mesh, blah, 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 blah. So what we have to do now is follow the instructions. So we just basically say start now, then it'll go through detecting your internet connection type, please wait. It asks you a few different questions. Is it static, dynamic, PPOE? And if you're not sure, best to just leave it on the default one, which is dynamic, which is most people's is gonna be set up. You've got a special ISP settings option if needs be as well. You just press then once you're on there, again, it tells you what you're gonna set it up. Again, we're gonna press next. And then it says saving, so you just give it a few minutes to set itself up basically and then it'll go on to the next page okay it says save successfully it's telling you please set a wi-fi name and password so if you want to call this something different rather than nova 9 whatever we can do i'm going to call this because we're going to actually set these up in our new Tet for Tech studio, which I'll show you a bit later in the video. Bear in mind, there's not much in there at the moment because we've only just got the keys. We're gonna call this F T, no, no, T F T. And we'll call it, uh, let's just say 20, 22 so we know obviously it's a year we're filming this and then wi-fi password you can change as well so i'm just going to delete that and i'm going to take that off the screen so you don't see it okay so i've put our password in you press next and then it says saving at the bottom so this is where it's basically programming that data into the node bear in mind i'm guessing once this bit is done this will say it will require you to connect back up to the actual wi-fi it's because obviously the settings have changed right so it says we're disconnected so this is where you're going to have to go back into your settings click on the new name of your router or the mesh system, should I say, which we're going to call TFT2022. I'm going to put the password in. Again, this is the password you've just created. Then you press join, and then it should go through like it is there and connect up. And there we go. So that's connected. So I can go back to the Tender app, which is there. Now press next, and it should, in theory, work. There we go. So that's gone through. It's showing my password there, which obviously we're going to block out on the screen. Hint, hint Mrs. Editor. Uh, and then press OK. Add other nodes. So this is where we add other nodes. So what we do is basically power and reset nodes on until they're completely start up. About two minutes and the solid on. So we just need to plug in the other nodes, which I've got the power cables all plugged in ready. I just need to put them in the back. Again, these don't need Ethernet connections. I'm going to set them up right next to the primary node, but these would normally obviously be spread out throughout your home or office. Okay, so basically when you've set these up, so as I said, you plug them all in, they start flashing, takes about three minutes for each one. So I do one at a time and it automatically connects up to the primary node. So that's pretty straightforward. And you'll see in the app itself, you'll see now it's listed the controller. That's going to be the main one. The first one we plugged in, which is connected to your router, as well as two agents, which are 
these two. Okay, obviously you can add more if you want in. There is a little connection button on the back of there. So if you were to go out to buy more of these separately, you basically press that button on the back. I think it's for three seconds. The lights will start flashing. You do it on the new one you buy and then it goes, oh yeah. And then they all start talking to each other. It's simple as that, or you can do it through the actual app itself. But as you can see there, it's showing the controller and the two agents. It's as simple as that. When you are setting up though, it does say you do it within three meters of the main one. But once you've done that, you can move these to different locations in your house. So you keep this one near your router. And the other two, you could put one in, let's say, in a kitchen or a hallway or the living room, and another one upstairs, let's say, on a landing area or a bedroom, and that'll then cause the whole house to have a really big bubble around it. And you don't have to worry about disconnecting from one to another because it seamlessly does that. So when you walk from one side of the house to the other, it will connect to whichever one is closest to it, which then obviously allows, obviously, you to stay connected at all times. The app itself, so here we go. It's basically telling me that there's one client connected. So that's obviously my phone is connected up to this. Obviously you can connect your laptops up with the username and password, whichever you chose using the settings on your phone or your laptop or whatever, and connect up to the new thing. It tells you your upload speed, download speed, and you've got options at the bottom. So you've got my Wi-Fi, which shows you this. You can click on each agent. It tells you information about it. You can click on all devices and it'll show you everything what's connected to it. Obviously we haven't got anything at the moment. You've also got settings on there. So you've got internet settings, so you can change the settings what we originally did to begin with. And you've got Wi-Fi settings where you can change the password if you wanted. You can even create a guest network. So let's just say you've got people coming into your office, but you don't want them to actually be able to connect up or be able to access any of the other stuff in your office. You can create a guest network and they'll have a new Wi-Fi area or code. Okay, so that's gone through. You've also got parental control options there as well. So if you don't want the kids doing something or whatever, you can add groups and stuff. I'll let you go through that. You've got blacklist so you can block people. You've got LED indicator on there. So it'll tell that you can turn the little green lights off on and off at the front. You can always schedule disable and so forth. You've got advanced options on there. So working mode, IPv6, land setting, DHCP service, static IP, DNS. IPTV, mesh buttons, can do different things. PS button, port map, you've got everything on there. So you can put working mode and you can choose how you want it. So you can have it in a router mode or access point mode, which is pretty good. So it was really up to you how you want to set it up. But there's that many different options on there, it's good. And again, you've got different options on there as well, auto system maintenance and so forth. But I would suggest you do the firmware updates if it prompts you. Okay, so we're in our studio and I'm just showing you how we've got these tender novas set up. Bear in mind, it's going to probably be a bit echoey, sound not going to be the best in here, picture quality maybe as well. I'm filming this on our iPhone because, well, we haven't moved all our camera equipment in yet because we only got the keys a few days ago and we're waiting for a lot of the security systems to be set up, new locks and stuff like that, which will be done by the time you actually see this. But just to give you a rough idea, because we're going to be using these mesh systems or this mesh system actually in this building, because we're going to need to use Wi-Fi now and again. Yes, we have got Ethernet connections. We've got like 118, I think it was altogether, but that all needs setting up as well. We're waiting for the internet to get installed. We are running off a 4G router at the moment. So we have got internet and these will be basically working via that. So the speed's not the best at the moment, but when their internet gets fitted, well, things will be a lot better, but let me just swap the camera around so you can actually see. So as you can see, we've got the node there. This is our primary node. Obviously, it's plugged into the power like all of them have to be, and the power switched on for obvious reasons. We've also got it connected up to the Ethernet connections down here. Sorry about dust and dirt again. We are just moved in, so it needs a good cleaning and obviously set it up and these are just temporary shelves for now but that's how you set the first one up the first one will need to gather connect up to your network connection like there or you plug it into your main router just to give you a five idea our router's in here but as you'll see the light is currently 
purple at the moment because we do not actually have internet connected up or set up yet. We've got to wait another, uh, I think it's 10 days before they actually come out and we're running off a of 4G. But you would plug basically your first node directly into that router, that's that black thing there, or similar thing depending on who your provider is, your internet or how you've got it set up. But as I said, our internet, because we've got ethernet ports all the way around the building, which will be hooked up directly to it, we can run it from there. So you have your first one, we've got it set up in roughly the center of the main room. There we go, give you a rough idea. So size of the office. So that's set up there. And then we'll do take a quick detour upstairs to show you upstairs, how we've got them set up up there. So just bear with me one second. Here we go, upstairs. And then into the upstairs main. On the left, you can see just in the window back there, you can see we've got one node there. All that needs to be done is plugged into the power, obviously power switched on. You'll notice the line on the front is green. Same with all three of them. And then around the other side of the studio, We've got one in the other window. Obviously, we'll reposition these a bit, a little bit better. We may even put them in the ceiling, who knows? But it gives us an internet connection in the building, which is going to be covers for all of it. We can have a guest network, so when people visit, they can connect to the internet. And you can do pretty much what you want. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video and know I did. Why not check out one of our other videos by clicking this box up here, or this one just down here. Otherwise, you can give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe, comment below, let us know what you think, and we'll see you next time.